Greetings, comrades! So some time ago I got my hands on a wonderful gas mask. Very unusual among Soviet patterns. And I think it's time for me to share it with you guys. I'm Aramid and today on Spark Project we're going to take a look at Object Graphite, PBF Gas Mask or simply Hamster. Давай, let's go, I show you! As I mentioned, this gas mask is pretty unique in a number of ways. The name PBF is an abbreviation for Protivogaz Beskarobochny Filtrujshi, which roughly translates to canisterless filtering gas mask. It is derived from how the gas mask in fact does not use filtering canisters, although the popular name for it is Hamster, for obvious reasons. It was developed in the late 60s under the designation of Object Graphite and adopted by the Soviet Army in 1973. It was most likely produced taking inspiration from and as a response to American canisterless gas masks from the Vietnam War era, such as the M17 and its derivatives. Unlike the American counterpart, the PBF was not a general purpose gas mask. Due to its streamlined features and lack of protruding elements, it was originally specific to the Soviet Airborne or VDV. It was to be used by aerosol detachments during parachute landings into contaminated areas. The slick features alongside general wearing comfort made it popular outside the VDV, among vehicle crews, officers and more. However, the PBF has one major downside – its short protection period. An expert version of the PBF gas mask with its distinctive features was also produced, intended for the East German NVA, but that's a whole different story. Taking a closer look at this beautiful specimen, the first thing that catches the eye apart from the wonderful condition is the packaging. We see a lot of plastic, which is very unusual for Soviet-produced items of this time period and was usually reserved for higher-grade equipment. This is an example of a complete PBF kit, and it includes two filtering inserts, a face piece in a watertight bag, two external inhale valves, a carry bag, spare voice membranes, and is additionally equipped with a personal anti-chemical package. What we do not have is an instruction manual. In fact, I could find absolutely nothing on primary sources or documents for the PBF throughout three hours of searching the internet, although they for sure do exist. I will continue to look for them, and if I do find anything, I will, as always, drop them on our Boosty and Patreon pages for free. But if you want to support the channel, you can also sponsor my quest there as well. Thank you! The PBF is equipped with a SHMB face piece, which stands for Canisterless Helmet Mask, and indeed, it doesn't have a standard thread, but is instead equipped with slots for two filtering elements that resemble the cheeks of a hamster, hence why the nickname. In the middle we see a protective cover. It is detachable and sits over a solid plastic, possibly baculate unit that substitutes for the usual valve box. It is held in place by a metal frame and fabric tape. Inside is a double exhale valve with circular flaps and the voice emitter, protected by yet another cover, which screws out to allow for membrane replacement. Interestingly, there are no inhale valves present on the mask itself. The goggle unit is located in a single plane and is placed close to the eyes, which allows for a wide viewing angle and comfortable use of observation devices. The hood of the helmet mask is similar to that of the SHMS face piece, for example, and has dedicated ear forms with refinements to improve the passage of sound through rubber without breaking seal. Another unusual feature of the SHMB is an oronasal submask located on the inside. The submask is secured to the above-mentioned plastic unit, where we see the exhale valve and the voice membrane from the inside. It is attached to the outer mask with two plastic and one rubber pin. On the left and right we see internal inhale valves of the submask. The goggles are attached by metal frames and rubber sleeves that also serve as slots for anti-fog films. Although in many cases the PBF was not equipped with any kind of anti-fog at all, it actually depended on the ordering agency or institution. Generally, the newly introduced submask oriented the airflow in a way that would ventilate the goggle unit effectively on its own. It would also prevent the exhaled air volume from contacting the glass. This way fogging was limited. There are also a lot of markings present on the SHMB, with almost every separate part having its own factory label. The submask size stamp printed on the inside is a significant one. Submasks on the SHMB are sized separately from the face pieces. This one is labeled Cyrillic B for a large. There could also be M and S for small and medium respectively. Smaller submasks were usually installed on smaller face pieces and vice versa, of which there are five sizes, 0 through 4. Face piece size markings are on the outside, just like on all other Soviet masks. This is a 2. As well as that, there is the press form number and date of production on the right side. This mask was made in the first quarter, judging by the single dot, of year 1987. Back on the inside, if we remove the submask pins, we will be able to access the slots for the filtering elements. And let me tell you, shoving this suka in place is no shush lick. 
So for now, let's take a look at them separately. The first thing we see is that there are two of them, and they're meant to be used simultaneously. So this is not like some Yoba Neurot putting two filters in a PNK. Here is intended. The second thing is packaging. Once again, it is plastic, and here they're actually double-bagged and completely airtight for storage. We have an unsealed set, so there's definitely no point in extracting this pair. These are EO19E canisterless filtering elements. EO, as always, stands for single sample number 19, with E, which is actually Cyrillic E and not E, likely meaning element. These are not FPK-style canisters traditional to Soviet filtering gas masks. They are different by both external and internal layout, and as a matter of fact, don't have a dedicated carbon layer. Internally, these are based around two relatively thick fabric packages, infused with a chemically active element and protected by hydrophobic and structural layers on exposed surfaces. They are separated by a skeletal plastic frame with an empty space exposed to an inlet superstructure. Given that the filter is installed inside the mask, it is constructed this way to let air travel in both directions while still passing through filtering layers. This feature, doubled by the amount of filtering elements, is what gives the hamster breathability unmatched by other Soviet gas masks. Yet, it is also responsible for its most significant downside, the lifespan of as little as 20 minutes. On the outside, the filter is enclosed into a plastic frame, which on one side is stamped with a batch number and, what is very unusual, also an individual serial number. On the reverse side, we see a number in a circle, which is a factory of origin designation as far as I know. We also see the item designation, EO19E, and a date of manufacture, 4th month of 1987. And now, comrades, it's time to put the skill of shoving square objects into circular openings to good use. To assemble the gas mask, we need to insert the filtering elements into slots on the face piece, which is for sure easier said than done. Ay, bleach. Luckily, there is no right and left, at least. After those are installed, we pin the sub mask back in place and snap on the inhale valves and covers on both sides. The gas mask is assembled. Go make a butterbrot. Now, because there are no plugs and seals like on regular FPKs, it is very vulnerable to moisture. That's why the PBF is equipped with a watertight plastic bag meant to protect the assembled mask from the elements, to be used when traversing water barriers, and whatnot. The PBF bag is also pretty compact and possesses slick features, if that can be said about the gas mask bag. Frame inserts are used to prevent things from poking out and for the bag to maintain its shape. The shoulder strap here resembles a weapon sling or a trousers belt. The waist strap is normal. There is also a belt loop to make the bag compatible with Soviet RPS and RD-54 load-bearing systems. The bag locks with a pair of metal snaps, common for late Cold War Soviet gear, and probably very familiar to anyone educated on US gear from earlier periods. Since there is no flap, the factory stamp is located on the inner side of the back wall. Unfortunately, the factory name is not recognizable, but the date of manufacture is 4th month of 1987. On the inside, the bag is compartmentalized in a minimalist way. There is a main compartment, a compartment for loose items and filters when disattached, and a compartment for a personal anti-chemical package, like this IPP8. We have a nice early one here. On the outside, there is also a pocket for spare voice membranes and anti-fog films, if the kit in question is equipped with them, which ours isn't. Speaking of anti-fog, another solution is a KPZO crayon, which would work pretty well on this gas mask. To prepare the gas mask for use, we need to unpack and insert the filtering elements, which we have thankfully already done, as well as put the gas mask into the plastic bag, roll it up and place it into the main compartment. The anti-chemical pack and the spare membranes will take the respective slots, and all the loose items we can return to the second compartment. When it comes to using the PBF, I can assume pretty safely that it was meant to follow identical or similar guidelines to other Soviet filtering gas masks. But since I couldn't find the manual, I cannot fact-check this, which means that we will not be discussing wearing positions this time. Instead, we can just take a look at an equipped PBF kit in general.
The PBF is indeed a very unusual gas mask. It was intended more for nuclear warfare than for chemical or bacteriological, and some people even claim it to be a respirator, which I think is incorrect according to its own designation. Perhaps you will be able to see it again in a future VDV loadout or something like that, but I don't know, it's for sure not planned or anything. And this for right now, I hope that you found the video informative, hope you liked the gas mask, and see you in the next one. Давай! Вот подошел я к тебе. Вот мы увидели друг друга. И что? Time to share it with you guys. Да, кстати. It's time to share it with you guys.